everyone. I am Brenda Weatherly, and know many of you. I am now the program manager for the San Benito Leadership Institute. And I want to thank Christina for inviting us here today to talk about our new program. We're really excited about the program that we're hoping to launch in the fall of next year. Starting a new adult community leadership program has been a goal of mine for many years. I am a graduate of the original program, Leadership San Benito, in 2006. And I, what I learned in that program and all the connections I made was so, were so invaluable. And I, it was, I think it's really a travesty that we don't have a program like that happening now. So we really want to get a new program started. The old program ran from 2005 to 2012, and it produced a lot of great leaders for our community. Mary Casillas, Mindy Sotelo, and Liz Sparling are all current leaders in our community that are graduates of that program. Initial efforts to start a new program started in 2019 when I was working with Gary Byrne at the Community Foundation and Kathy Johnson, who was instrumental in starting the original program. We did a lot of research and we um, had some problems just executing. And once the, once the pandemic hit, I was so glad that we hadn't started a program because we would have had to have tabled it and restarted it. So skip forward to 2022, and again with Gary and Kathy, we grew, uh, brought a group of people together, committee together, to really research and test the appetite for a new program. And they all agreed that it was time to move forward with a new program. The Community Foundation has supported this effort with a grant of $25,000 in startup funds, and is also acting as an incubator for us until we can establish our own 501c3 organization, which is what we're hoping to do within three years. I am serving as, as I said, as the program manager, and I'm basically doing administrative and fundraising services as an independent contractor for this group. Dr. Kathleen Rose and Corinne Kepler, who also serve on the committee, are working in the capacity of program facilitators now. Both women have backgrounds in leadership education, and we're really excited to have them developing the curriculum and executing the program for us. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Corinne and Dr. Rose. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Really nice to see some familiar faces here. And boy, lots of memories of coming to these meetings for many, many years. Um, so Corinne and I were part of the initial screening group, and uh, I was retired one month when I came back and started having conversations about what leadership could be, potentially, in San Benito County. So Corinne, could you please go to the next slide? This gives you an idea of who is around the table. These are community leaders, and we have some of you here in the room. So if you've served on our screening committee or are now part of our regular committee, will you please stand? Phil Fortino. <laughs> and Myra. Where'd Myra go? Here she is. So we have been meeting for a year. And during that year, this group looked at leadership programs from across the country. We looked at all different types of formats. We looked at programming. We looked at curriculum. We looked at cost. And we put aside many things that we did not want this program to be. We didn't want it to be a run-of-the-mill usual, just jump on a bus and go to locations and find out about the community, although that's important. We wanted these groups to be able to come forward and work with our nonprofits in San Benito <coughs> County to help to strengthen the leadership and grow leadership here that would future serve on boards, be a part of the civic conversation, and also equity. And so we'll be talking more about that. We had a retreat. Our retreat was uh, last month, and Kathy Sheridan facilitated that. And as you know, she's a fantastic facilitator. And we, at the end of the day, came up with a vision, values, and purpose. And this has been really organic for us, and it's helped to guide our conversation about what's going to be next in the curriculum and the development of the program overall. And it's very exciting to think that this program could be extremely unique, very much individualized for San Benito County and Hollister and grow leaders that at the end would commit to leadership service within the community, particularly on board development. And I'll take it over for, from here. Um, as many of you know me, I'm Corinne. Um, we met during the community listening sessions. I feel like almost half of you participated in those, um, so it's good to see you all again. 
Um, the purpose really is to build a stronger community, which I really felt after facilitating 18, I think 18 sessions, 250 community residents coming together. It, there really is a need for this. Um, folks really want to get more involved, more civically involved, more community engaged in their community. Um, and so I think now is really the right time. And so just to give an overview of what the program looks like, we're looking at a nine month program. So starting in September, 2024 through May, 2025, uh, one full day a month. Um, and those days will consist of uh, about a half day immersion in a leadership topic. So leadership topics, leadership development topics include aligning with purpose, self-awareness, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the kind of uh, curriculum that we're gonna be exploring with the group. Um, and then we'll also be doing uh, civic topics. <laughs> uh, civic topics, so we will, we will explore the county. We will get acquainted with you know, different parts of the county that, that folks might not be familiar with. Um, justice and safety, uh, education, get an, get an outlook on education in the community. Uh, and then we'll also do board skills development training, and that could also be used toward um, running for public office or you know, um, some, some other type of leadership role. But board skills training, fundraising, governance, board placement, we're gonna kind of do uh, a couple different um, uh, engaging ways that uh, participants can work with, uh, work with nonprofits throughout the course of the program. Um, and we're also gonna we're gonna do some assessments so people get really close with their own their own skills and, and where they need development. Uh, and part of a key part of it is the the kind of cohort model. So there will be I think about 20 25 participants in the first in, the, in our pilot program or this first um, cohort, and they will get to actively work together and really get to know each other. But they'll also build relationships across the group of 25. And so this is just to highlight an example. And as Dr. Rose kind of shared, our, our committee represents county, city government employees, uh, nonprofit leaders, um, and also folks working in the business community. So we really have a kind of a broad spectrum on, committed, uh, on the committee uh, represented. And we also want our program to, to attract that, that kind of spectrum of folks too. So um, Sarah Nordwick is on our, on our committee and she, this is kind of from her her perspective, what a nonprofit could use is a the ability to have training locally because she can't send somebody away. They don't have the budget to do that. So local training and also getting those community connections, building partnerships and collaborations, and then creating you know future leaders within, growing our own within the the, the staff who already work in the county. And this is just a typical program day. So we'll do some leadership assessments. Um, for example, Myers-Briggs or Strengths Finder. We'll do exercises where folks will kind of collaborate, work together. We're not necessarily gonna read like a ton of books because nobody has time to do that, but we will focus on some, some core kind of uh, curriculum that we think is really important, including um, some more that we'll share about, conflict resolution. So these are some of the leadership topics that we'll delve into. And then we also wanna bring in local leaders and, and have guest, guest speakers as well. Um, anything else? And then diversity, equity, inclusion, concluding activity, and uh, Dr. Rose will share more about that. So I brought my copy of Crucial Conversations. Do any of you have a copy of this on your shelf? Yes, <laughs> excellent. So this book is really important, and it's a book that I've used all throughout my career. And what's really um, a benchmark for this program is how do we talk to each other? And how do we talk through conflicting situations? And how do those situations lead us to really effective decision making? And how are you able to cut through some of the noise that um, makes it impossible for you to get to the true message of what you're trying to say in communication? And so I'm teaching a class at San Jose State right now in their higher education leadership management program. And we're using crucial conversations as a way to do kind of an inbox activity of what do you do when you have 10 different things that you have to decide in a day and you have political factions and social factions and economic factions that really create uh, a lot of uh, barriers for that conversation. So crucial conversations would be a highlight for our program and we would use those activities that are outlined in that book throughout our curriculum. Another thing we know is really important for us to have in terms of conversation is where is our community in terms of equity? Equity, diversity, and looking at inclusion. And where do those conversations take place? So if you go on the United Way of Iowa's website, you'll see that they've developed a 21-day equity challenge that's available for anyone to use. 
And the questions that come are really important questions, like, for example, what is systematic racism in our community, here in San Benito County and in Hollister, and where, where does it happen? Where are the biases here? And what prevents people from moving forward in their careers and in their, their quality of life here because of that? And so we're going to incorporate key questions in each one of our sessions throughout the Institute with supportive materials. Uh, there'll be some videos and there'll be some questions. And the idea will be to create a safe space where you can talk about racism, you can talk about bias, you can talk about discrimination and really discover how that's a part of the fabric of any community in the country. And so this gives you an idea of the types of things we hope to look at. And then another idea that we have had that we're really excited about, and thank you so much, Brenda, for doing all the research on this, is a one-day simulation. And these simulations have been done throughout the country. It's called the simulated society experience. You come in for the day, you are assigned a role, you're given the opportunity to look at all the challenges of that role, you have to work collaboratively with others as you move through the day, and then at the end you process it. And Brenda's done some tremendous research on how this has been used in other small, large communities across the country. We think it'd be a great fit for our San Benito Leadership Institute. And then, as I mentioned, we'll be doing assessments throughout the program so folks can kind of understand their skills, their strengths, their talents, and, and kind of understand how that relates to others on their teams. I've run a number of workshops of board, boards of directors and executive staff at nonprofits through this exercise. Um, and it's really just about awareness and also kind of finding how you can improve on the strengths that you already have. Has anybody here done the Strengths Finder? Yeah, it's great. You all know it's great. Yeah. Um, so we'll be doing some, a, a variety of assessments. And so this is just a little bit about the program so far. So as uh, Brenda mentioned, we got some very generous startup funding from the Community Foundation to design the program and, and just kind of start launching it. Um, the cost to participants, like, like Dr. Rose said, we did a, um, a lot of research across the country and even locally to find a, a price point that might be a good fit for this community. And we, we settled on 1500 It's kind of a, a little bit on the lower end, but we, uh, we really want to make sure that people are, it's accessible for folks and we'll also have scholarships available. Um, and then sponsorship is really um, something that you all can help with. We really want to get, um, we really want to get businesses involved in, in supporting this program because we really want everybody to be involved in supporting the next kind of local leaders that are going to emerge from the community. So Pinnacle sponsorship is 20000 to 25000 Legacy 10000 to 15000 Corporate and then scholarship sponsorship. And Brenda has all the information. She designed a really wonderful package that tells you everything that you get from, from supporting the program, um, in addition to all the feel-good stuff about supporting the community. So as we wrap up, we want to hear any questions, comments, thoughts from you. You are our first audience that we're really coming to to talk formally about it. We've had a great partnership with the Community Foundation. Our committee has been established. We've done our retreat. Uh, we are now at the point where we are ready to put together the source documents we'll need in order to have it happen and roll it out to everyone. And so how could you get involved? Well, we want you to give us some feedback about it and let us know what you think. We all have a strong passion for leadership. Leadership really gets a bad rap, in my opinion, right now, locally, statewide, nationally, globally. And so what do we need to do and what's our responsibility to change that and grow leaders who are going to want to say, yeah, I want to, I want to run for an elected seat. I want to serve on a board. I want, to, I want to chair that board and to be a part of that going forward in the future. So we are very interested in seeing how that would work in San Benito County, knowing that there's so much raw talent here ready to be developed and ready to have the opportunity to come forward. So what can you do? Well, you can become a program sponsor. We, we need that right now. You can also invest by talking to your employees about it or thinking about those that you work with that you think might be good candidates to come to our first inaugural institute. You can also help us to spread the word. We have, we have not, not spread the word so much yet, although Myra and her group made this fantastic flyer, so shout out to her again on that. This is, this is a great flyer, so please share that. And then also, uh, Think about how you can help us in terms of hosting an event, providing a venue, providing guest speakers in the future. And that's it for our presentation. Anyone have anything they'd like to share with us? Or